Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are joining in with the Sew Your Colours 22 challenge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I, my previous video was launching a new challenge all about sewing your colour palette. If you haven't checked that out, I will link that video down below in the description box. You, you'll find, if you go on Instagram, you'll see that there's a few people now starting to trickle through with make already because we're still in January and it's only launched like in January. So if you want to get some inspiration and join in with the chit chat, then head on over there and just see what's going on. But basically there's an app that I've recommended called colorwise.me and it's a free app. So I've only recommended it because it's, I tried it, it's free and I tried a few which were free and a lot of them you had to pay to access what your colors were and they weren't that great. This one has been tried by quite a lot of people and they all come out quite accurate. So that's sort of, um, confirming that this is quite a good app. So basically it's an app which you can use, which you take a, a selfie or you upload a picture of yourself without makeup on in like a bright day, like without your glasses on. You'll then do a color match with a cursor to find a good color for your skin tone, your hair color and your eye color. And based on those three things, the app will then generate a color palette for you which will be your best colors which will suit your complexion so the kind of colors which won't wash you out or won't um, look like it's sort of draining won't make you look so, too pale or um, not the best so the colors that they recommend will then bring out the best things it may bring out the, your eye color it may enhance your hair color it may make your skin appear glowing so from all the people who've been trickling through on various social media platforms um with the colors that have been recommended they look really accurate so i would really recommend that i will put the details down in the description box below as well as that other video so all the full details are in there but there is a challenge and if you use the hashtag so your colors 22 there's two there's the american spelling for of colors without the u and then the british spelling which or the english spelling which has the u in so there's two different hashtags you can use and you can share what colors you've got um the fabrics perhaps that you've got um, and what your colour palette is. So I came through as a cool winter. I don't know if this is particularly within the cool winter, but there are blues in there and I just like blue. This is actually an old shirt, it's ready to wear one that I got from the supermarket in the sale, but I quite like it. And because I've got a like vest top on underneath, I was actually wearing this vest top underneath the avid seamstress blouse when I was at work today, but I wanted something a bit different because I didn't want to wear the same blouse in two videos. I'm on like in sequence in case you thought that I'm just being lazy and I've just filmed them and I'm just releasing them as and when. I am actually filming this on a different day so I thought I'd just better put something different on. Any older subscribers will know that um, whenever I like to film the cat likes to make an appearance um, and he likes to yell and squeal and he's been outside and he wants to come back inside and obviously no one's paying him any attention so hopefully he will go and sit on the chair over there and keep quiet. What was I talking about? Colour palette, that's it. So I came up with the cool winter, which is kind of like bright jewel tones. So there's various shades of blue, and on that theme of blue, I'm going to show you some fabrics that I've bought, and then I'm, later on in the video, I'm going to show you some fabrics that I've been given, and I'll explain that. But for the time being, let me just show you the different ones I've bought. And you may agree or disagree if they suit me or not, but um, let me just grab them. So after... Um, using the app, I think this was before Christmas actually, and I just got a rough idea and I thought, I mean my favourite colour is blue, but it's getting the right shade of blue, and I fancied making a shirt, so I bought this um, which is a cotton hmm could be a cotton lawn from Croft Mill Fabric so it has this um, check pattern on it the, I'm quite bright because I'm standing right under the conservatory lights so it probably looks quite purpley, but it's quite quite a nice blue. And the, it's almost like a very pale yellow that's running through on the check. I thought that I would make a shirt because it's that sort of shirt fabric. It hasn't got like the sort of drapiness of a viscose or anything. So that's what I'm thinking. It's from memory. It's like a couple of months ago now. Um, I did also buy another shirting in a gingham. Oh, let me just show you. I was just going to show you the blue fabrics, but from the same place. I got a black and white gingham and that was a, what do you think? Black and white are both in my colour palette. And I thought, well, that will go with, for a shirt, 
that will go with like a black vest top or white vest top and then black jeans or black trousers as like a casual sort of look. I just don't want to make loads and loads of t-shirts. I thought, right, okay, I quite enjoy shirt making. I don't always want way to, to do it, but it's quite enjoyable sewing with cotton because it behaves itself and it doesn't stretch out and slip about everywhere. And it's quite nice. The only trouble is buttonholes because I can never work out where the buttonhole starts and finishes. So whenever I mark the buttonholes with chalk, um, where I want them to be. I kind of, I get the foot and I see how big the buttonhole is going to be. And then I thought, then I think, oh, what direction is it going in? And then, or it's lined up, but it's not in the centre, because obviously it sews one side, then at the top, then down, and then land across. And so I've, before, I've had buttons like that. So if you have any tips for lining up and sewing buttonholes, please drop them in the comments below. So this is the first one. I can't remember how many meters I got, but there's enough to make a shirt. And I originally bought it to make, oh, I originally bought it to make the Archer shirt, which is very similar to this kind of shirt. But I have, I have backed down on my dislike for deer and doe, and I have re-bought a pattern that I sold last year. Last year I bought the, I had, um, a horrible saga with the deer and doe um, akajou trousers. I've got a whole playlist about trouser fitting which involves the akajou trousers which I'll link down below in the description box. But basically it was this time last year I was trying to get trousers to fit. The result, the long story short is I still, I just gave up and I didn't have any trousers that fitted but they really put me off. Anyway I had bought a couple of other patterns from them at the same time only to find out that I was at the very top of their size range, which I'm not in any pattern company, so I hadn't checked the size ranges, but the printed patterns, I was at the very top. So I complained. Um, they then said, okay, if I could show proof of purchase that I bought the memory card ran out, sorry. Um, yeah, so Dirado said, if I showed proof of purchase that I'd bought the patterns from them, they would give me a discount code to buy the PDFs because they're in an extended size range. Um, but I was so, in, um, which would cost me like three euros, I think, instead of the full price. But I was so annoyed that I had to then rebuy them that I didn't. And so I de-stashed the paper patterns, there was a couple of them, and then, so I didn't have them. But then I keep thinking about the Melilo because that was one of the patterns that I got rid of the Melilo shirt. I just like the look of it with the collar and the shaping was the main thing because I had a look on the Fold Lines website which they sell indies but they also sell the big four as well and I was looking for a shirt which wasn't just straight up and down which would have a bit of shaping. Now I have bought some fabric to make the Avid Seamstress blouse which is a really nice tucked in blouse. Um, doesn't look so great untucked but tucked in it looks really smart but I wanted something that I could be untucked and more casual that I could wear with jeans and no matter all the ones I looked at I just kept coming back to that one in my mind thinking well yeah that the deer and doe pattern does fit the bill um so I went back on their website my code had expired and so I can I then had to pay three times the amount of what I would have done a year ago but in the end, I bought the pattern. So I bought the Melilo again. I will either print it at home or I'll probably send it off to Fabuloso to get it printed. Um, they're here in the UK, small family run business. And they're one of the few printing companies, just a printing company, who don't charge you like a minimum of five pounds postage. Because usually I only have like the odd one or two patterns that I print. So I don't want to pay five pounds postage and they don't have that minimum like fee of five pounds. So it's quite good. And it's um, really nice, almost like a tissue paper. So it's not too bulky and doesn't take up much room in my drawers either. So anyway, I bought a couple of patterns, one of which is the Melilo. So I might get that printed, might print at home, I haven't decided. So I haven't got it to show you, but I will put it up on screen. You're probably all familiar with it. When I looked on the Instagram hashtag, there were over 2,000, I think, of these. So it's a really popular pattern. And I thought, that shirt, I might do the black and white in the Archer shirt, so it's a looser shirt, more casual, but the blue one, I quite fancied being like that. And actually, Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door, I think that she may just made one out of one metre of fabric, because I think she said it was a grown, grown on like um, sleeve, rather than having to insert the insert, insert the sleeve. 
which I thought was quite interesting, but she's a bit smaller than me, so I was like, I don't know if I would get it out of a meter, so I will keep you posted on that one. Let me just show you the other fabrics I got. So this is a fabric that I bought after everyone was talking about the colour palettes and things, so I bought this in January. I had a little bit of money given to me for Christmas, and so I bought a few fabrics and a few patterns, and that's it. I don't I don't tend to buy lots of things unless I have like Christmas money, birthday money. I, I de-stashed and minimised my um, drawers and everything last year and I don't want to hold a big stock of fabrics that I'm not going to use. I'm trying to buy more intentionally. So I saw this turquoise and this is a viscose. This was to make the avid seamstress blouse. So it does have a small, well they're more leaves and berries rather than flowers. So there's a bit of a rust there, but I think it's a bit of a yellowy turquoise. So I'm not sure it's, once again, look at the glare off the lights. It's quite hard when you buy things online um, to know what kind of a blue it is. So if it's not the right blue, which I think it might not be, I think if I wore a different blue over it, which is more my color, which is more brighter, more of a, like a royal blue, that might bring out um, it might just bring a bit of a barrier between my face and the fabric because so I know there has been discussion in various groups about people saying well if they want to sew in their colour palette what do they do with fabric that they've already got they've bought which isn't in their colour palette and what I've been recommending is that you either use it for skirts and trousers so it's a, basically anything that's away from your face or if you make something like this, like with a, if I was to make this into a dress, I'm not, I've only got a metre and a half of it, but if I was to make this into a dress, to have like a scoop or a v-neck dress, then have a brighter blue, um, like a chunky necklace or a scarf. So that is then the closest colour to your face, because I think with, um, with sewing clothes in colours which are not from, in fabrics they are not in your colour palette, like this one I think is a bit of a yellowy turquoise rather than a crisp clear blue which I kind of thought it might be, um, it could then, that is up against my face, could be the wrong colour, whereas if I then have something over the top of it or higher up, that is then what your eye is drawn to more, that other colour, those accessories. So it doesn't mean that you've got to get rid of all the fabrics and everything that you already own and what do you do, just order some things. Just think about how you can put an accessory in a contrasting colour perhaps which is from your colour palette which is going to create some kind of barrier between your face and the top or just move it and relegate it down to the bottom half of your torso, your body and then pick, like say if you have a pattern fabric, pick a neutral from your colour palette which is then going to sort of go with this. So if, you, if you've if got cream as part of your colour palette, rather than I'm white, I can't do creams, they would make they're that sort of yellowy sort of shades make me feel, look a bit sickly. But if you're, you know, I could then make this into a skirt, I could then contrast it with a navy um, or a, a brighter blue top or a white top, that would be fine, that would mean I'm not wasting the fabric and that I'm still getting to make something that I can wear. Make and wear what you feel, you feel makes you feel happy. But these are just some ideas if you did want to stick quite rigidly to your colour palette, how you can get around that issue. I have another blue, surprise, surprise. This is my favourite of the of all of them, and it's the longest length, which is I think about two two and a half meters. And I bought this from oh this one and the turquoise came from So 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 UK, and just look at that colour. I just love it. It's so bright and it's cheery already. And I know that this out of all of them, this probably suits me most out of all the colours. But it's not going to stop me making things with these other blues. Um, so I bought this with in mind because I did make the Florence dress by Sew Over It last year and that was in like a creamy le and green leafy print and it just it doesn't look great on me. I felt a bit frumpy in it and I don't know if it's because of the colour. So I did think, because I did do um, like a full bust adjustment, I did alterations on that pattern. The only thing I need to tweak is take an extra, I did a half inch narrow shoulder adjustment but I need to take a further half an inch out of it but that's it. So I'm thinking as I've already adjusted that pattern, perhaps I should make it in this and I'll feel better because 
I mean, I'm not a big fan of dresses with elasticated waist because I do feel that it then creates gathering around my hips. But I did buy a belt. I've got a brown belt. Um, and with the Florence dress, I put some belt loops on it and wore it with a belt. And I felt that gave me that waist definition that I like. Um, and it sort of just tied it in nicely. But I thought with it, um, make a summery sort of dress. I mean, I could line the skirt part of it, but I just, I'm not sure. It might be a bit thin for this time of year. Um, but yeah, I just thought a nice dress with um, some white trainers. That would look quite, that's quite a nice one for spring. Um, what do you think? I don't know whether to go with that or to go with a different pattern, but as I've got two and a half, I think I can get a dress out of that. Before Christmas, I took part in an Instagram challenge, which was run by Claire, who is also on YouTube, and she is under Stitch Hem So I will link her YouTube channel in the description box below, so you can check her out. And she ran it, and I just want to double check that I got the hashtag right, so it's called It's Also Christmassy, and the challenge was to make things Christmassy with some Christmas fabric, whatever that may be. So I entered it because I made the Christmas jumper and I made some Christmas face masks. I then also did some other like Christmas gifts and stuff, but this is with specific like Christmas fabric. And then it was like names in the hat sort of thing, random person. So there were two winners and then I think got the first prize. And the prize was something that Claire put together herself and donated. And I just wanted to share this because we're on the blue theme. And also I just wanted to show you how generous and how kind Claire is from doing this because quite often with competitions, you'll have a sponsor from a shop and she did for the second prize, but for the first prize, she she gave that out of um, her own things. And it's really, um, it's really personal. Let me show you the first one is a pin cushion and she, I checked with her and she has actually made this. So it's some with tapestry and it's so pretty. Look at the detail on that. And it's really nice little size as well. And the only pin cushion I have, the only one I have is this, which is a generic one I bought from a fabric shop. So there's nothing personal about that at all. And all the pins kind of get mushed in together. So thank you, Claire. I'm really looking forward to using this. She also gave me some haberdashery, some um, pins, a thimble, a chalk pencil, but I also want to show you the fabric that she sent me. Now there's a couple of cottons in there. One isn't my colours, which is a rusty colour. Um, but these are my mum's colours, I think. So what I was thinking to do, because they're in nice cottons. Oh, and this is the other one. Um, I really, I have to wear face masks because I work in a school and they've brought in the rule of face masks around school. So I'm wearing them quite a lot at work, not just like in the corridors, but like in the classroom with the kids, depending on um, how many people have got in there and things. So I'm you're wearing them quite a bit. And most of the face masks I have, I made a year ago and they've been through the washing machine so many times. I've just replaced some of the elastics in some, but they are sort of shrinking a bit or some have gone a bit discolored. So I thought I really need to make some more because I am wearing them. So these, look at that. They will be perfect for me. And then I thought I might make some for my mum. Now my mum sometimes watches my channel, so you never know mum, these could be made into a mask coming your way. Um, we then have, not sure of the fibre content. I don't really know what it is, but it's, um, it's very drapey. And this pattern is, I'm not, they're like little, I'm not, they're like little creatures or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but black and white. So again, for my colour palette. And look, there's loads here. And it's quite, um, I don't know. Do you know what, I haven't measured. I haven't measured, I'm just wondering. We say that's like one, two. I think it's definitely gonna be for a dress or some culottes. Now I did make the Sew Over It Ultimate Culottes, which I had relative success with in the summer. Um, and they would be nice breezy or a nice um, breezy skirt. Maxi length tends to swallow, swallow me up and just look like I don't have any legs. Um, and that I'm just basically torso and feet. Um, so I don't think I'd make a maxi skirt because I have done them in the past and I just haven't worn them. But I think a dress, summer dress, um, could be a blouse. I think there's enough in there for like all sorts of possibilities. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then another one. Um, this feels like a crepe, 
Claire, feel free if you're watching this to um, comment and tell me if I'm right or wrong on these. So this one has like a daisy print. This one is more opaque. So I think this one, this one would definitely go well for the summer because I think with um, some wide leg trousers, some, well, trouser fin, culottes, because they seem to be easier to fit on me, um, with some culottes in the summer and then a nice black tank top, like vest top or white one would look really nice and I think I would just get so much wear out of it because I wore those culottes quite a few times because they were kind of to the beach and then also wore them to like a barbecue, they were quite like smart casuals and then let me show you my the other one which is blue which is a Viella fabric, I had to google it which says it's a mixture of um, wool and cotton and I think that is definitely from a cool winter palette and it feels, I mean, this would be the perfect fabric for um, like wide leg trousers and a jacket, like a suit. But we all know I can't make trousers, not nice, not nice fitted ones. So I'm thinking a jacket of some kind. Now, if I just, sorry to dive about, if I just get that turquoise fabric a second. Um, I'm just wondering if the sort of yellowness of the turquoise will be improved oh right should have really thought this through if that will be improved by clashing it almost does i'm not sure that probably doesn't go that looks quite green on camera actually compared with the blue um, i think perhaps i'd need a darker blue to go to clash with that but this on its own i think would make a really nice jacket it's quite cheery and it's really soft and there's four meters i said i bought the melly low shirt i also bought a couple of other patterns i bought the billy sweatshirt by tilly and the buttons because i made a sweatshirt last year by i think it was the schnitzel patterns looking back at my highlights video which showed everything i made last year reminded me and then i was like oh yeah i had a uh, a pattern for a sweatshirt which I made in French terry that was fine I then made it in a looser knit and the weight of the knit just dragged, pulled it down and it was really long and it was so big I couldn't do anything with it I'm hoping that I can cut that fabric and see if I've got enough of that fabric to then make into a shorter length version of the billy because I've heard really good things about it I have heard that the neck band is quite tight but I am my simplicity toaster sweater that I've been making that neckband is too loose, it's too open, and it's annoying me that I didn't use ribbing or anything similar for the neckband because it's sort of gathered the fabric and it has sort of stretched out a bit and it doesn't look that great. I did think about cutting off and putting ribbing on it, but I thought actually if I try the Billy, so it is a closer fitting neckline, neckband, I might then feel a bit better with it and it doesn't have, the ones I've made in the past have a drop shoulder and sometimes I feel that's not the best look on me because it adds bulk here where sometimes that can make me look quite wide. Whereas with the Billy, it is the proper, like the shoulder seam on the shoulder. So that is one that I bought. I then bought two patterns from Sinclair Patterns because they had buy one, get one free. And they do a petite range. So you, I think it's like petite, regular, and perhaps tall um, height range in their patterns. I did look for a fitted trouser pattern, but most of it was sort of stretched or it didn't have a center front zip. So because I'm really struggling to find petite trouser patterns. Anyway, that's not a whole subject. But I bought this, so I bought the, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Oh, I'll tell you what, I will refer to my bullet journal. Yes, you heard it right. I have actually got round to, I bought a bullet uh, notebook with the dots on. I can't even open the page because my, my fingers are really cold today. This is not artistic at all. This is literally my scribbles of 2022. Oh, let's just show you what we got. So we here, um, so I've done key dates. Have I done key dates? No, well, I've done the calendar for the year. So the year planner and then key dates. So basically I've highlighted school holidays. That's all, you can tell that I work in a school and I've got two kids at school because that's like my, that's the first date that I put in the calendar when I get it. Um, and look, anyone who's seen anything fancy from bullet journals will know this is not fancy at all. It's literally a highlighter pen and a fine liner. Um, so I've done a page for statistics, 
so for my statistics and also like video statistics so I kind of know like how many videos I've uploaded that a particular month and um you know what what I put out as well just so I would like to grow the channel I've been doing it for five years now or more probably a bit more than five years and so I'm just looking ahead and I thought right okay I'll record um, record down what I've done and then I can they will encourage me at the end of the year if I see growth um, in videos or uploads or I can see what people are interested in because my channel tends to be a bit all over the place but thank you for bearing with me I've done a double page here for Instagram challenges so each month and obviously January is so your colors 22 which is a year-long challenge which I hope you're gonna join in on but if anyone else runs there's like a juicy January and something else and I think there's like a Galentine's for like Valentine's Day so in February I'll then put those on I then put purchases so I have written down um, one page for fabric and one for patterns so I bought the Juno fleece jacket from Sinclair Patterns. This was the free one basically. This is the one I added into the bar the basket. But it's a zip up um, fleece. It does need to stretch to the fleece so but that is the kind of jacket I would actually just sling on and go around to the shops with or just go into town or something with. So I think that would probably although it was like just an add-on, oh it's free, let's quick pick another pattern, that might actually turn out to be one of the key pieces that I wear this year once I've made it. And it's the Danielle top is the one that I really bought it for, which is a back wing um, like knit top, but it's sort of fitted around the hips, but it has sort of like drapiness around here. And I and at the back it has a nice sort of crisscross. And I wore one almost identical to this on Boxing Day when my family came over because I got one from the charity shop. I think it was like two pounds fifty, and it was from Next originally in like an aubergine plummy colour so I don't know if it's the right purple for me but I wore it and it's, it was quite low cut so I wore a black vest also just to sort of layer up as well and it's sort of a bit of glitter to it but I thought actually it was really comfortable to wear but because it was sort of fitted on the arms and it was a three quarter length and fitted around the like the hips it didn't feel like I was wearing a big sloppy jumper but it had that room to move so I have ordered a couple of French terry fabrics which I'm hoping I'm going to have enough drape to make that um, pattern in because they did show on their blog or on one of the posts linked with that pattern that you could make it in a French terry so I thought I'll give that a go but my order is taking ages because the company I bought from this is like a 10 day delay because of Christmas and New Year and they had a big sale on they haven't dispatched my order so I ordered it on the 30th of December and I'm recording this on the 12th of January and they haven't dispatched my order yet so it's just as well I'm not desperate for the fabric but they were to go with that so I bought the Billy, the Melilo, Meli, Melilo, the Danielle and the Juno so four patterns in January so I've written down so I'll show you here so I've written down the name I think I need to make some of these columns wider and change the way I've done it so I put the pattern company name whether it's a needle woven type of garment fabric requires I would need to look at the pattern for a particular size and then jot down it just means if I wanted to go back and make that pattern again and I was fabric shopping I could then go oh I used or it only needed 1.5 or it needed two meters so that will help me rather than sift through pages and pages of things and then the cost um they weren't too bad actually for the patterns because obviously I got um, one of those free and then in terms of fabric the blue I've got the blue dotty viscose there's two and a half meters of that one the viscose in the turquoise was 1.5 meters um, and then on order I've got a light gray loop back terry a dark gray loop back terry um, a black anchor viscose that was probably to make a blouse and then a black spin pinstripe bengal line I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's like a trouser weight fabric, but it was 99p a meter. So I ordered three meters and I thought if I can then try again on trouser fitting, that might help me do a twirl and then it's only cost me three pounds in fabric rather than calico, which is two pounds a meter. It's just cheaper. So I just bought that. And then have I got anything else written in? I don't think I have. Oh, then I've just got a page for video ideas. Um, and that's it so that is my bullet journal and then I'm hoping to look back see how I've used it this month and then I can move forward on to the next month but I try what I tend to do is I will make notes when I'm making a garment and I had a big A4 notepad last year and the year before 
but it's like scribbles all over it but it did tell me any adjustments that I've made the sizing and all the rest so once I start sewing again I'm going to fill this in and then probably at the end of the month just do a conclusion of made this pattern it was a success or you know like what fabric I use where I got it from what are sizing alterations or what any adjustments I need to make in the future so I can then refer back the next time I want to make it and see if I need to um, adjust anything or do anything to that one I know that I've um, got a bit of sidetracked and you probably just came here for the fabric but I'm turning this into this is a Friday sews video so um, this is the chatty bit and I just wanted to show you before I go some of the so few little presents I got. So the first one is from Anna from you may um, she has a channel called You Got Me in Stitches and I'll link her channel below and she sent me this that she made and this has um, all sort of fabrics that she's then sewn in and then put the H on there and it's just a really cheery little picture that I can just have on my sewing desk. The only concern I have is the sun because we have a glass roof in here things tend to fade after a while so I'm hoping that if it's just slightly behind my machine it'll be okay but it certainly brightened it up for January anyway and that will um it's really nice just to have something my handmade because I know that what it, the effort and the time it takes for someone to make something and then send it so that was really kind of her and then the other thing when I said my mum watches my videos, my dad basically puts them on the telly, watches them for a bit, wanders off and leaves my mum to watch the rest of the video. I don't know why, I think they just want to know what I'm up to. But I did a video, I did two videos about gift ideas for people who sew. One was under £15 and one was like um, bigger presents. And so one of the things, that, two of the things that I mentioned, my dad does woodworking as a hobby and he has done for like over 20 years. And he then made a couple of things for me because we don't do presents for each other, which might sound really mean, but a few years ago we just decided to stop doing exchange of presents. Sorry, my hair, I feel like my hair's in my mouth. A few years ago we just decided we'd um, me and my two brothers we all have children now and so we decided we would just buy for the children in the family and we decided that as adults we would stop because people were getting things they didn't really want and you know it was quite tricky and it's like I'll give you that and then you give me about the same thing so we just stopped it so when he came around and said I've got something for you I was like, oh, but we don't do presents he goes yes but this is just he goes it's just for me and so he made me a button coaster so he turned that like, he said it took him five goes so he made five of them went slightly awry I think with the holes was the tricky bit trying to get them lined up and so I have that on my um, behind me, which I'm standing in front of the mess, so you can't see. Um, but I have that there with a the mug on, because I always got some sort of water bottle or mug or something on the go. And I said, oh, a button coaster would be really nice. I saw them on Etsy, and so he went off and made them. And I had no idea that he was making it. And the other thing I asked him, I said, oh, if you've got time, can you make me one of these like wooden handled seam rippers? And he said, Oh, I've got projects because I'm making um, his, like my nephew, making him a holder for some headphones. He's like, oh, I'm quite busy at the moment. So I was like, oh, okay. And then because we didn't really do Christmas presents this year, um, I was like, oh, well, well that's, just, um, that's just on my list of things that I would like. And then I open up the box and he's made me one. So it has a point turner at one end and at the other end it has the seam ripper, I'm just trying to, there we go, and it has the seam ripper, and then you, I'm trying to do it so you can see, so it literally goes in, and then it slots in the ends, it's not poking out all the time, and the same for the turner, I don't know if I'll use that, because the metal point, sometimes that can poke through the fabric, um, but I'll certainly use, and I have used a seam ripper, so it sits there, like that, when it's all tucked away, and he made that and he had somebody help him advise him on making that bit there um, and it's a really good weight so you can have that in your hand to rip all those stitches out and I just thought oh that was so nice because I saw some and I included them in my video saying oh, this would be a really good thing I quite like this and then I had no idea after asking me if he could make one he said he hadn't got time and then he made me one so thanks dad um, I really appreciate it because again it's a handmade gift and he's and it's so smooth as well and I know 
um, how long it can take him to get all the details right and with the tools involved and he explains to me how he had to do it all and everything so I just thought I'd share that with you and just share the little sewing bits that I got for Christmas. I really hope that you're joining in on the Sew Your Colours 22. I look forward to seeing your posts pop up on Instagram. In the meantime, if you want to check out those other channels and also the trouser fitting playlist, as well as the original challenge video, basically there's lots of things to watch. I'll link down in the description box below and I'll see you next time.